There is a saying that no size fits all. In electronic engineering, it should be no memory fits all. For any design, whether it's a consumer application, an industrial project, or anything else really, the key is to know your application. How many reads are we talking about? How many writes? What's your longevity story? But what if you're working on a green IoT design? What kind of memory solutions should you consider? What kind of options are out there for the complex memory design requirements you need? I'm glad you asked, because that's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Martin Schreiber from Swissbit and I explore the unique set of memory requirements that green IoT designs demand. The roles that endurance, performance, and density play in flash memory solutions, and how Swissbit's SD cards and EMMC technologies can add value to your next IoT design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Swissbit. Hi, Martin. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi. Thank you for the invitation. I'm very happy to chat today. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about embedded storage in green IoT applications today. But Martin, before we get started, can you set the stage for us? We're looking at an ever-increasing amount of data being created and consumed worldwide, right? It's a complex world, yes. There is more and more data being created, captured, and copied and consumed worldwide. And this amount of data is growing rapidly year on year. This statistic here tells us basically that the global data sphere is doubling every three years. And till the year 2025, the global data sphere will go to a size of roughly 181 zettabytes of data. The thing is one zettabyte, that's an incredible large number, which is very difficult to imagine. So I broke it down to terabytes and one zettabyte of data is one billion terabytes. And one terabyte of data is kind of tangible for me, so I can understand what one terabyte looks like. So when you take one terabyte and print it on A4 paper and stack it, then the stack is as tall as the Eiffel Tower 60 times. Or if you take the great Harry Potter audiobooks, all seasons, and you put them on MP3 format, and you take that 127 hours and play it 134 times, well, that's one terabyte. Or back in 1993, 1% of the total internet traffic was one terabyte. Fast forward today, that's just what Google alone processes every four seconds. Of course, only a small percentage of this data is kept through because there are only 2% of the data which are produced and consumed, which is saved and retained into 2021. But the bottom line here is that the amount of data is, is growing and as is the storage capacity increasing year by year. So, Martin, no storage solution is perfect for every application, right? We need to look at specialized solutions based on the market, correct? Absolutely. Just to put that into the right context, when you look on the global semiconductor market value, McKinsey here says that the semiconductor industry is going to be a $1 trillion industry by 2030. And when you look how this market size is distributed, you can see that there are a few high growth sectors like automotive, industrial, but also basic industries like computing and data storage, fundamental industries growing at a very fast pace. When you take the $590 billion of semiconductor revenue and bring it into context of memory, you will see that memory by 2022 contributes to roughly 25% of the overall market. So it's a significant share of this industry. It's also a very important share because without data, no electronic application actually works. This $144 billion is then split into different memory categories like DRAM. It's the biggest chunk of the revenue. But today we're talking about NANS storage. 
So NAND storage in 2022 has got a market size of roughly $60 billion. And when you look into embedded IoT applications, you find that you need very specialized solutions. And these $60 billion, they are mainly covered by the so-called mainstream market. And when you look into specialized industries, like you can see here on the picture, charging station as an example, that needs very specific requirements in regard to storage. When you look on a basic block diagram of an embedded system, you find that the heart of the system is basically a microcontroller or a CPU, which is perhaps the number one design choice of a design engineer. So the first choice is always what kind of CPU do I have to use or do I need to use? Question number two perhaps is then what kind of storage do I need? And this is pretty much determined by a couple of factors which we're going to talk about today. There are other systems in an embedded application like input-output, you also have power supply, you have a real-time clock and different communication aspects of an electronic system like Wi-Fi connectivity, talking to a cloud, I need to connect via Bluetooth, these kind of things. But by and large, memory or storage is one of the key factors when designing an embedded IoT application. So let's talk about IoT, where flash memory is quite commonplace. So when it comes to flash memory, we need to talk about density and performance, right? Yes, before we jump into performance, let's talk a little bit about density. The density heavily depends on how much data needs to be stored in my system. And that starts with as little as a few megabytes and goes up to terabytes of data. And that's especially the case if you go into cloud storage. For small densities, the industry is giving us the SLC technology, so single layer cells. But as the industry is evolving and revolutioning over the time, there is a clear industry trend to squeeze more bits into each cell. So today in the industrial space, we are using triple layer cells, so TLC. But especially when you go into data center, there is also QLC available. Last year, Kioxia, as an example, they presented HLC, which is hept level cell, and that's basically squeezing in seven bits per cell. So that gives you 127 different voltage stages the firmware needs to differentiate. Of course, this HLC technology is kind of a proof of concept and has not made it to the market yet. Another industry trend is 3D stacking. 3D stacking is basically to stack planar layers per die into the vertical. So like a skyscraper, you can see here that, that there are many planar layers stacked up each other and that reduces the dollars per gigabyte. So Martin, how do we characterize performance for flash memory? Performance is one of the key aspects of any flash memory device. The performance is the speed the data is sent across the interface and is pretty much determined by the application. The fundamental question, as in many cases, is what is the use case? Are we talking about a read application or are we talking about a writing application? When it comes to reading, a typical use case is the boot drive. A boot drive is a piece of storage which basically holds the operating system, Windows, Mac, Android, or when it goes into embedded systems, mostly Linux, or a video player, so basically a storage which holds a video and then this video is, is showcased somewhere downstream. So this is the read mostly use case. It's not a very sophisticated use case. It doesn't really challenge the storage device. Very different than the writing use case. So this is the second fundamental use case when as soon as we write data, this really exhausts the storage device. You can write small data, so like small data logging, like from a temperature sensor or a timestamp or any industrial data logging. So this is small data logging. On the other extreme, video recording. Video recording is the writing of very big chunks of data in a periodic manner. And in between, there is this mixed use case, which is called large data logging. So it's a kind of a mixture of the small data logging, writing use case and the large video recording use case. And that's the use case, which is very exhausting to the flash device and which can really make a difference to how long your flash device can give you a certain performance. Okay, so how much data can be written to the flash drive also plays an important role here, right? Exactly. Endurance is one of the most difficult 
parameters to select because in the end it pretty much determines how long your flash drive can last in your application until you need to replace it or you have to replace your system. Endurance is measured in terabytes written or drive writes per day. So how much terabytes can you write to the flash drive or how many times you can fill the drive per day for an expected lifetime. And here the JEDEC gives us three fundamental use cases, the sequential workload, the client workload, and the enterprise workload. None of these use cases or workloads actually represent what customers are really doing to the system, but they give us an as close as we can get assumption how the workload can look in a system. So the sequential workload is one of the most simple workloads, which results in the highest terabytes written or drive words per day, and that's video recording. So a constant stream of video files which result in very high terabytes written. When you come to normal PC usage, the client workload is the one to parameter the endurance of a storage device. So it's basically this transcript of normal client user sessions, web browsing, we're watching videos, we are writing documents, we're working on Excel spreadsheets and so on. And one of the most demanding workloads for storage devices is the enterprise workload, which is a synthetic benchmark simulating multi-threading, multitasking enterprise applications. So this is a workload which results in the smallest terabytes written or the smallest drive words per day because it is the most challenging one for a storage device. It's very different than the sequential workload and very different than the client workload. And this is the number one factor which can really impact the expected lifetime of a storage device. So what you're showing us here is an expected lifetime of a storage device, and that heavily depends on the specific workload in an application. Can you give us a more tangible example of the difference it can make in the real world? Yes, this is all theory, which we need to put into practice. So let's take a normal SSD with 512 gigabyte raw capacity. Perhaps everyone has seen this before. Usually this raw capacity is over provisioned down to 480 gigabyte, which is the user capacity, the usable capacity for the user. The difference between 480 and 512 gigabytes is used for SSD management processes, which take place in the background. So 480 gigabyte is really the capacity you can use for your application. We had the 480 gigabytes is 3D TLC, that's an assumption, which gives a P cycles of 3000. So 3000 times you can write data to the cells and erase the cells again. When you now look on the different workloads, so sequential workload, client workload, and enterprise workload, you can see that the expected lifetime and the amount of data which you can write to the drive before it's getting unreliable differs a lot. When you look on the sequential workload, and a three-year expected lifetime, you can see here that in the sequential workloads, you can write 2.44 drive words per day. So 2.44 times you can fill your drive per day for a period of three years. So this is sequential workload. When you go into the most difficult workload, the more complex workload, the enterprise workload, and you apply expected lifetime of a product lifetime of five years, you can see that this drive words per day is going down to 0 0.42. And that's a huge difference on how long your drive will last. So it's really important to know the use case. If you don't know the use case, it's best to speak to an expert to identify what the use case is so that you can select the right flash product with the right amount of endurance to save costs in your system. And Martin, this can make or break an embedded system, right? But we also need to address form factor, correct? Yes, absolutely. First of all, there are so many form factors these days. So back in the days, there was only compact flash, which is coming out of the photography world. But when you look into the catalog today, there are things like CFAS cards and there are also M.2 modules and different form factors, which you can basically split into removable cards, into modules and also embedded storage. And today I want to talk about two storage solutions here when it comes to form factor. That's SD and micro SD memory cards. And the second one is EMMC because they are used widely in the field. Well, you might ask yourself now, SD cards, really? In the consumer world, SD and micro SD are in decline. In applications like tablets, laptops, 
mobile phones, the number of SD cards is in decline because it's moving over to more embedded storage like UFS or PCIe BGAs. But when you look into industrial markets, you can see that we have a sharp growth expected for the coming years. Micro SD cards are still widely used in many industrial applications where you need a high robustness, where you need replaceability, where you have to maintain your system. Okay, so what does Swissbit offer when it comes to flash memory for green IoT? Green IoT applications have in common that they are increasingly connected to the internet and therefore there is a need for additional security features like secure communication, secure over-the-air updates or IP protection. And these are all applications which are possible to retrofit additional security features with a micro SD card or with eMMC. Green IoT application, that's in general applications like charging stations, smart metering devices, photovoltaic inverters, or building management controllers. All of these applications require small storage in the area of 4, 8, or 16 gigabytes to store the operating system and small data logging. So the MLC technology seems to be very popular when it comes to small densities in embedded applications. So how does the TLC benchmark against MLC? Here on this slide, you can see a benchmark of 4 and 8 gigabyte MLC EMMC products against current 3D TLC solution from Swissbit. Compared to MLC, 3D TLC offers a much higher performance factor 2 to factor 10, depending on the density and also what kind of performance metrics you're looking at. But in general, it's higher performance than MLC. Of course, this goes a little bit on line with power consumption because latest 3D TLC products need a little bit more power when it comes to high performance. This goes hand in hand. But the big advantage of 3D TLC battery powered devices is the lower standby current consumption. So you can see here that with 3D TLC, the current consumption is much lower when it's in standby mode. So when the device is basically sleeping and perhaps not sending any data to the system. The biggest advantage of 3D TLC in general is by using things like PSLC or additional over-provisioning is the high endurance. So when it comes to 4 gigabyte, you can see here that endurance is increased by factor 2, 3, 4 even, depending on the workload. And when it comes to 8 gigabyte, also there is a significant increase of the endurance. So Martin, earlier you mentioned SD and micro SD, that they're still widely used in industrial markets. So what solutions do you guys offer here? There are several applications where SD cards are still widely used, starting from dash cams, body cams, drones, or in general CCTV surveillance, over to different networking communication applications like data center switches, IoT gateways, base stations for 5G wireless communication, or looking into charging stations, photovoltaic inverters, different metering applications, or even robotics, industrial automation, casino gaming, or in the medical space. So these are all target markets for micro SD solutions. When you look on all these different SD memory card solutions, you will find that there are several technologies which are providing great value to certain buckets of applications. So when you look on true SLC, here our S600 card as an example, that's a very good solution when you need small densities in the area of 512 megabyte up to 2 gigabyte perhaps, which results in the highest endurance of 100,000 PE cycles. On the other end, industrial 3D TLC, which is using the latest NAND technology, 112 layers plus, is an excellent solution when you look into higher densities in the area of 32, 64, up to 512 gigabytes. All these different applications also have different workload profiles. When you look into dash cams as an example, Sequential write performance is more important because we are sending video data to the interface, while in industrial automation like robotics or medical or avionics, it's more the random write performance use case, which is more important, and therefore it requires a different solution. Swissbit also has got high endurance series in the portfolio as well as high performance series. We've spoken about the video use case for dash cam, so that's our S52, but also high endurance series are increasingly popular with our customers. 
High endurance, meaning 3D TLC in PSLC mode, provides an increased amount of endurance for right intensive workloads. And here, 3D TLC in PSLC mode provides a very cost-effective alternative to SLC or MLC-based products. On top of that, this technology is also able to keep up with the small capacities for embedded applications. Okay, so we've covered density, performance, endurance, and form factor. But Martin, are there other things that are important when selecting for purpose storage devices for embedded IoT applications? Yes, there are many more things to consider. I think we covered the most important ones, but there are additional value adds which you can introduce to your system by using the perfect storage device. Here at Swissbit, we make sure that we store secure data in a trustful manner. And there are a few other things which need to be considered when selecting, especially a NAND flash supplier. So first of all, there is a longevity. When you look on the typical roadmap of NAND flash, especially from the consumer world, you will see that there is a sequential transition from one technology to the newer technology, which gives you a longevity of approximately one or two years. And we appreciate that this is not sufficient for more demanding industrial type of customers, which want to have very long support of a certain technology. And this is exactly why we are using industrial grade 3 TLC, because the industrial grade 3 TLC provides you availability of at least five years plus. In some occasions, we are looking more into seven up to 10 years. It also provides full cross temp stability from minus 40 degrees C up to 105 degrees C for certain product types. So it gives you a much more robust and long available product for your system. It's also important that you have a certain service level available on the controller, on the firmware, but also when it comes to the silicon, where Swissbit is working with leading NAND flash suppliers and has got long-lasting supplier agreements in place. Another important thing is locked bomb, especially in the SSD world that some manufacturers are changing firmware, they are changing hardware. It's also important for an embedded system that once you qualify a part, that this part is not changing as the years evolve. So it's really important that you select a supplier who can offer you a strict fixed bomb policy. That means once there is a change on the bill of material of the SD card or the EMMC, and even if it's just the firmware, that the customer gets the choice to transition to the new part or remain on the old part. So this can have a big impact on the end application side. So we had a very volatile supply market over the last couple of years. But Martin, how can Swissbit bring value to our designers when it comes to supply chain security? Yes, I think COVID-19 has shown the vulnerability of the semiconductor industry because it's heavily concentrated in Taiwan. As such, Taiwan is the bottleneck in times of a supply shortage. Taiwan accounts for 92% of manufacturing to the most advanced semiconductors in this world. When you just look on memory, 70% of memory comes from East Asia. So there is a heavy dependency on Asia on these kind of products. So what we do here at Swissbit is we are changing that. We want to bring that into Europe with our vertical integration, with our ability to handle everything from RAFER up to packaging in one place in our integrated packaging assembly and testing sites in Berlin. And that provides a significant value to our customers in terms of supply chain security, but also it gives a plan B to any mainstream manufacturers. On the chart here, you can see that when you look on the global journey of a typical SSD product, you will find that the product from wafer manufacturing up to packaging is being sent across the globe a couple of times for testing, for packaging, for assembling, before it's being sent to the end customer. And that's, first of all, not sustainable in terms of CO2 footprint. And second of all, if one chain is not working properly, then we end up with supply issues. The Swissbit approach is that we want to bring everything into Europe and we want to manufacture everything in our fab in Berlin, from wafer up to packaging. Of course, we can't manufacture the wafers because of cost reasons, of course, and also scalability. But whenever we are working with several suppliers where we can always balance, as an example, when you look on NAND, Japan, or US North America. 
or when you look on controllers, Swissbit has acquired Hyperstone, our own MCU supplier. And all that makes the supply chain of our customers more robust and resilient. So we've learned a lot about storage today, but Swissbit also offers cybersecurity solutions as well, right? So what does that look like? When we look on the NAND flash module market, it's a very standardized market. We are not able to differentiate in any way. We can just make sure that whenever you buy a Swissbit NAND flash module, that it's compliant and it works with all our hosts without any issues. And therefore, we are trying our approach here is to reduce the total cost of ownership of the system. When it comes to embedded IoT security, we take those NAND flash modules, which are standardized, and add additional security features, which allows the customer to upgrade an existing system by adding like a micro SD card or an EMMC or even a an USB dongle. So it's the perfect solution for upgrading existing up and running systems in the field because the customer has not to change the hardware. So when it comes to embedded IoT security, we make sure that the local data is safe. So by adding encryption to the local data on the micro SD card or the EMMC, but we can also implement additional features like secure boot, secure video data recording, or we can upgrade existing systems with an HSM module for secure hardware authentication for the IoT world. Another product SwissBit is offering is FIDO. With the iShield Key Pro, we are able to provide a very secure and attractive USB key, which allows users in the OT to authenticate themselves against an online service. FIDO is the only authentication method which is phishing resistant, so it prevents businesses around the globe to avoid phishing attacks and lose any data or suffering from any ransomware attacks. Okay, so Martin, can you recap your main points for me? Absolutely. The semiconductor industry is going to be a $1 trillion industry by 2030. Storage and memory is playing a major part in that. It can make or break an application. But the important thing here is that there are certain applications which are not covered by the mainstream market. Applications which require specialized storage solutions to make their system either more robust with more performance, maybe longevity is the critical thing. So embedded NAND storage from Swissbit ticks all the boxes when it comes to these kind of applications. Charging stations, smart metering products, photovoltaic inverters, BMS controllers, even ATM or payment modules, they all require relatively small capacity with specialized features for high temperature stability, long AVT support, or power loss protection. There is a strong roadmap trend away from SD cards to either micro SD cards or EMC. The devices within embedded IoT are getting smaller and smaller. Therefore, EMMC is, is one of the most important form factors these days. But the micro SD card is still widely used in applications which require in-field replaceability on the fly to keep manufacturing lines, as an example, up and running to generate revenue for businesses around the globe. There are many things which you need to consider when selecting a storage product. There is density, there is performance, there is endurance, there are a couple of other things. And to get a very robust system, the best thing is to talk to an expert from Swissbit. Excellent. Well, Martin, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Swissbit. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.